Right, well, I wanted to welcome everybody. I'm Lizzie, Lizzie Collins, the director here at uh, Zuleika Gallery, and welcome to our Zoom today. Um, we're really delighted to have Femke Dekkers, um, who's joining us here from the Netherlands. It's just wonderful that we can do this with you, Femke, and, um, and also our guest curator, Anstis. Um, before we go into the conversation, I wanted to um, just quickly take the opportunity to introduce everybody here on the Zoom to Hannah Payne, who is going to be uh, moderating tonight. Hannah has recently started working here at Zuleika Gallery and she's the senior director. And I'm so delighted, I can't say how delighted I am that she's, she's working with us now. Um, she brings a wealth of experience and it's wonderful to have her on board. Just to tell you a little bit about Hannah, she used to work at the, as director of the programme at TM Lighting, uh, director of the art programme, and has also been head of marketing at Blenheim Palace and also at the Royal Academy. So it's wonderful to have her. She's also an advisory board member for Maiden Arts in London and founder of the Art Five, which I urge you to follow. Some wonderful interviews there. So I'm going to leave you now with Hannah. And uh, while she carries on, I'm just going to let in the late covers now. Enjoy your evening. Okay, thank you, Lizzie. Thank you. And welcome, everyone. Um, if I can just start by reminding everyone a bit of housekeeping that this talk is being recorded. So if you don't want to appear, uh, just disable your video now. Um, we're also muting everyone for the duration of the talk. Um, but we do encourage you to ask questions throughout the conversation. So if you can use the chat box function at the bottom of the screen, put your questions in there and we'll have some time at the end for a Q&A session. So I'll read those out then. So I'll start. So thank you. I'm Hannah Payne, Senior Director here at Zuleika Gallery. And we're really delighted to welcome you all to this talk this evening. It's very special to have you all. This is the second time we've entered lockdown since we've opened the new gallery in Woodstock so it's really wonderful to be able to continue and uh, share this um, exhibition with you all this way. Um, so this evening our talk is in conversation with Femme Kadekas and guest curator of the exhibition Open Space with Ansys Oakshot. The exhibition is part of the Photo Oxford Festival and we're delighted to be a part of this important programme of exhibitions and events across the city. So as many of you know the theme of the festival this year is women in photography, ways of seeing and being seen. And we'd like to say a special thank you to Danielle Battigelli, Director of Photo Oxford Festival, for supporting our exhibition and for our involvement for our inaugural um, exhibition of contemporary photography. So to introduce our speakers, Ben Kadekers is a multidisciplinary artist who lives and works in Breda in the Netherlands. Since graduating in uh, 2011 from the Academy Sintiost, she's exhibited widely across Europe and her work is included in numerous collections. This is Femke's first solo exhibition in the UK, so we're thrilled to present her work at Zuleika Gallery in Woodstock, which has been so well received. Ansys Oakshot is an independent photography specialist and curator with 15 years of experience. Previously, Ansys held the position of Senior Specialist at the Photographer's Gallery in London. So thank you to you both and I'll hand you over. Thank you, Hannah, and thank you all for joining us this evening. It's, it's a delight um, to have this opportunity to talk um, about Femme Kadeka's work with her. Um, and to start you all off, um, I'm going to start a slideshow um, to open up the conversation. This first slide shows one of the entering rooms when you first enter Zulika Gallery of the Open Space Exhibition. And immediately we're met with um, Fenka's really unique and unusual practice. I see in front of me brush strokes, a, a painterly approach, um, collage, I get closer and I realise I'm also looking at a, a photograph and a photograph that appears to be of a, a three dimensional space. Uh, Femke, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you discovered this very unique uh, method of image making? Yeah, when I was uh, studying uh, art back in 2010, I was trying out uh, installation art. I made installations and at the same time also making uh, snapshots on the streets. Just uh, as I would walk to school or the shop or whatever, I, my eye would see fall on something and I would make a sna snapshot. But the snapshots just stage this image nothing more and the installations they got lost in space so at some point i realized 
the installation needs a frame of the camera. And at that point, yeah, really something really opened up and um, my ideas came together. Um, I was making the installations uh, quite frontal anyway. I was usually make, making them against the wall on the floor. So it just made sense to actually involve the camera in this installation art. And yeah, from that uh, moment on, it involved like this. <laughs> Yeah. And here, um, to focus a bit more in depth on this uh, first piece that we see in the exhibition, um, uh, August 2nd, Thursday, I understand mm. that this is one of the first pieces that you made um, when you had your own studio, um, yeah. and this uh, helped you really uh, reveal and, and get um, a confidence in, in your way of working. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Yeah, like you said, it's one of the first uh, pieces I made having a studio so it was also one of the first pieces that I could leave for a few days. Um, normally I would before I had a studio I would work temporary places where I would really work against the clock uh, usually just one afternoon or a morning and, um, uh, but it, my work uh, got painterly and painterly when I had my own studio and this is actually the first work that you see a lot of paint involved and um, and I understand that you, or I get the impression that you enjoy the experience of being immersed in, in your uh, installation. And I imagine that having more time in, in the same installation enables you to, to experience that, that, um, that immersive atmosphere as you work. Yeah, yeah, you can, um, yeah, you can look longer, you're alone with the piece, like, uh, um, you know, it, it's, it has this sort of sheltered feeling like I'm just here with the work and the camera and we're the only audience because I always see it as a, as a stage yeah, or, or a set where I work in the camera as a viewer and I move constantly between how the camera sees the work and how the camera sees the work that is um, leading for what I'm doing next. Like, so I'm never really working in the, in the room. No, I'm, I'm working very frontal like in a frontal way. Yeah. And, and can, you tell you, can, can you tell us, are, are there any particular artists or photographers that have influenced you throughout your, throughout your career? Yeah, uh, also back when I was studying art, I was really inspired by Jan Divets. And um, he is really famous for his perspective corrections. And uh, what you see here is just tape on the wall and seen through the camera, it's this, uh, this square. But if you would move the camera, it would go all funny. And when I saw this work, for me, everything came together. I thought, this is so good. And, and then I thought I have to try it out. And I tried it out in my old bedroom at my parents' house, uh, which uh, had still this sort of angry teenager <laughs> colored walls. And um, I moved the, uh, the cupboard side. You see it a bit on the right side, so I could have a place to work and then I just tried out this idea to make this square and uh, yeah uh, this was actually the first work I made like that so I made this still uh, when I was at art school yeah and I notice you call it lilac walls forever is this because you will never change the walls on your bedroom no it was more like um, before that they were really lilac and after that it was more dark purple and then I Continue painting it. So for me, this bedroom will, ha yeah, will have. Can I just interrupt for one second? Sorry, sorry to stop the flow. I've just had one message to say that they aren't seeing any any slides, and I just wondered if other people are having that problem. So just before we carry on, can we just kind of check that the slides are working? Oh, and maybe if other people can message to say if they have or haven't seen the slides. Because uh, Hannah, can you see the slides? I can see the slides. Okay. Okay, the messages are coming through saying that somebody can see them in New Zealand. Okay, everyone seems to be able to see them. Okay, all right. I'm sorry uh, to the person who couldn't see them, but it looks like everybody is seeing them. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that most people could see them. Okay, I'll mute myself again. Okay, um, to continue, this is a, qu a question that came up quite a lot um, with viewers who came to the exhibition, Femke. Do you see yourself as a photographer or a painter? How do you describe yourself as an artist? Yeah, I would just see myself as a visual artist. Um, of 
course, I'm using photography and I'm not educated as a photographer. I just learned it like on the go. I'm still learning, actually. Um, so I'm working, I'm always working in space, a bit of the boundary between painting and sculpting maybe, or like, and then, no, but I, I won't say I'm a photographer. I just say visual artist, really, yeah. I need to make my work like uh, my work couldn't wouldn't like exist without a camera but I wouldn't say I'm a photographer. I get the impression that um, using your your body uh, um, is is quite integral to the way you operate as you move around the, the installation so in a sense you are you're a sculptor uh, there's a very physical element to your work um, as well as um, the, 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 um, the use of the camera and the use of, um, the, of the paint and, the, and the, the collage element. Yeah, for me it's really important to work with it within my whole body range. Like I would paint endlessly on a piece of the, on the wall in a certain shape and then I would have the feeling like I'm sort of grinding a sculpture or something, you know, in a way. So, um, yeah, in my, in my head it also sometimes moves between painting or sculpting. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, yeah. I'm going to move back into uh, a photograph of the uh, the exhibition. So this uh, was uh, one of the walls opposite the first wall we met. This uh, wall presents the stages series, um, and Femke has actually made two uh, uh, projects with the same title, stages. But um, I'd love you, Femke, to uh, discuss this little this. Um, project a little bit more uh, and also tell us why do you use that title why have you used the, the title stages in a number of your projects yes to me the, the the space where i work it's the it's the frame within the camera so i always start working with putting on my camera and within this given frame uh, in this space I'll, i'm going to work and uh, for me this is sort of a yeah this set to me is a sort of stage like I'm working on this stage. The camera is the viewer, and um, but of course it also refers to different stages. I, uh, um, I when I take a photo, like different moments in the work process when I take a photo, and as you will see at some point, you will see will see uh, will still see the traces of or of earlier or former uh, stages being. Uh, yeah, it's actually nice that you have this slide now because. Um, you see that around the uh, the frame, it's actually much more freer and a bit chaotic. Uh, chaotic. And um, at, this, at this point, when I was made, making this uh, second series stages, I started to enjoy the borders a bit more than what actually happened inside the frame. Um, so sometimes my work is a bit more like freely and painterly and chaotic, and then it's more like more geometric again. I also move a bit uh, forward between those. And I think what's useful about this, uh, these two slides for the audience is of course it gives um, them a real in entry into uh, Femke's experience of being within the, 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 the set or the stage. Uh, and also you see uh, the transition from uh, the, the stage set on the left to the set on the right um, as the work evolves and different pieces emerge over time. And this leads me ultimately to my next question, Femke, which is about the beginning and the end. Um, we know that you uh, always destroy your stage sets at the end of a project. Um, is the destruction of your stage set integral to the whole practice? Is it, is it really important to you that they are destroyed um, and not uh, kept for the future? Yeah, because the photo is the work uh, and I uh, work analog, so I have it on a negative. So the negative will, yeah, is the base of the work. So the installation doesn't matter anymore as soon as the negative is there, as the work is there. Um, and you also have mentioned to me that sometimes in the destruction process, a new work can emerge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like um, adding and uh, altering. It, it's part of the whole process, but sometimes like the set is really um, worn out or like uh, it really needs, I need a fresh uh, new start. And then I start to really demolish the whole space because I, what I usually do is I build corners or I build sets. 
and then they'll start taking off carpet, a bit of wood, and, um, and for example, in this image, you would see like paint underneath, like popping up again. And so I couldn't, I couldn't just demolish it. I had to look through the camera what happened whilst demolishing this piece of work. So, and then I kept on working again. So for me, it's always really hard to actually really stop and demolish it and start a, yeah, new, uh, it's necessary for the work, but it's hard because when you have uh, elements um, where you can work upon, you know, it's so much easier to work actually. I, I can, I, I, I see what you're saying. It's, it's hard to say goodbye after, I imagine many months of, of, of developing and growing and uh, experiencing this space. Yeah, because you see that all these new possibilities of when you are removing stuff and it, uh, you know, it's all, I like to create a space for chance to happen. Like uh, I would take away a piece of carpet and it falls on the floor and maybe it falls nice and it gives a nice shade and then I can move on again, you know? So it's like having this, um, this stage set, this like um, planned things, but also that's usually uh, followed up by this chance that just mm -hmm. happened and um, yeah. And Femke, you mentioned just there about um, favoring analog um, over film, I know, uh, over mm -hmm. digital. Uh, I know in general, you prefer to use analog photography. Uh, can you tell us why you favor the more traditional uh, photographic processes? Um, and also we'll talk a little bit in, in more detail about this particular project of, of negative images, because I think this is a great example of, um, of your use of um, analog film. Yeah, I like to work uh, analog first of all, because then I have to, uh, have to choose when I'm working, when I make a photo and I don't have to choose afterwards. So it's for me, it's this, this slow practice is really appealing to me. And also the material, just to, to have this negative. Um, the works you see here now, um, they are the size of, um, yeah, this is usually the negative that I put in uh, the cassette. This cassette goes in the back of uh, the camera. You see the camera over there. And, um, but instead of, um, instead of sheets, I put this, uh, yeah, this, piece of um, photo paper in the sheet and uh, uh, I'm sorry in the cassette and it happened the first time when I um, um, you know I'm working analog you don't you don't get to see uh, results uh, when I'm uh, looking at, through the the glass of the of the camera everything is like uh, twisted upside down and it's quite hard to actually get to feel how the work is really like gonna be. And uh, because I have to get the, the film developed and it takes a lot of time, at some point I thought, you know what, I've just put paper inside of the camera and then I can just develop it here on, in my studio just to get a sense of, uh, of the work, of the composition, of how it feels like to, to uh, material, materialize it a bit. And, um, but then, then I thought it's actually also nice, like to have this little little works. So at some point, I painted my uh, part of my studio totally black, and um, uh, and I used with uh, yeah with white uh, crayon or white uh, paint. I would um, yeah make the shapes and and because I knew when I put photo paper in the uh, in the camera. It, it turns around, uh, of course, it's a negative on paper. So what's black will be white and white black. So then um, I made this whole series like uh, this way, yeah. Um, and to me, what's so special is that the fact that the photographic paper is, uh, replaces where, where the negative would be. Um, and therefore these are unique, unique each one an individual yeah. unique work. Uh, there is no, uh, no, no opportunity to make multiples. Um, and to me also what I get from uh, your, your um, pleasure from this work is the fact that you can control every element. Femke, you are able to um, control the whole um, process from building the, the, the stage set in the way that you want, capturing it uh, with your camera, um, mm -hmm. and then taking the, the photographic paper and developing it in the darkroom, which I understand is in your studio. Yeah. Um, 
so almost like a, a Polaroid in a sense, you have a print in your hands um, that you have made um, in, in a shorter period of time, but also completely handled by yourself. Yeah. Which is, I imagine, um, very satisfying for that you. That's very satisfying. And, um, because when I'm um, the colored work, I have to uh, get it developed in a special uh, lab. I can't do it mm. and um, then sometimes the work I, I keep on working in the set and then uh, the, the negative is not developed yet and that's always very like a bit stressful like uh, what is something happens or goes, goes wrong in, in the in the in the process then it's gone so this tension is always uh, also there in my work yeah so I'm going to move on to talk a bit more about your studio. Um, now, th these two pictures that we see in front of us now are um, from the making of Femke's most recent project, Turning the Corner. And at the time, I understand that you were on a, a, a residency um, for three months uh, and you had a new uh, studio within which to work to make, uh, to make this project. Um, and you mentioned how uh, a neutral space can uh, massively affect uh, the way you think and the way you operate. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I like to go on a residency every now and then uh, because we're having this totally new clean white space uh, away from all the history in my own studio. Uh, it's good to make new steps and to make a really proper new beginning. So I did this here in uh, in Germany, in Bielefeld, um, in the summer of 2018. And uh, this is the first time that I didn't put my camera on first and started to work within this frame. Um, I wanted to work a bit more freely and I want to bring a bit more dynamics in it and I wanted to concentrate really on painting only. So for the first few weeks I was just trying out uh, brush strokes and different sort of paints. Um, I was painting on um, wallpaper uh, so I could move, move about a bit more with uh, the painted stuff and um, later on in the process is where I the camera came along. So that was actually totally not nah, totally new. It was an other way of working. Yeah. I'm going to actually start to show uh, some of the final pieces from this mm -hmm. this project. This is turning the corner 1.2 uh, on the right hand side um, uh, from the an installation shot from the exhibition. Uh, and then I'm going to slowly move uh, on to 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 a close up of this piece. And um, to me, this this piece shows a real development in confidence uh, in yourself as a painter. I see so many uh, uh, different brush strokes uh, and a much more dynamic and, and uh, a looser composition, less mm. control. Um, it certainly feels that during that period that you were um, on this residency that you uh, really developed your, your um, style as a painter and explored the, the idea of um, um, soft focus um, and as I say le less less structured approach to your to your work um, mm. the other thing I, I really want to ask you about this project um, is why you chose the title turning the corner yeah it, it was this idea of um, I felt I wrote myself a bit in the corner like and I, I thought I need to open up a bit more um, be a bit more dynamic, um, um, not always working in that corner or using the, the camera at one fixed point. And, um, but in the end, I, you know, the corner is really appealing because it, you have all this, uh, this um, uh, dimensions of the room and space. So uh, I ended up working in a corner again. But a uh, turning corner it actually says then, um, um, yeah, changing, uh, take another direction maybe. And, um, and that's what I did by not putting there the camera straight away on the tripod and uh, <clears throat> starting to view this room only through one fixed uh, point of view. But as you said, like just start painting and I, I use the whole space and I, I could move the camera multiple directions. And um, so that's, yeah, that's a bit why the title is given to that. Uh, 
you also mentioned to me previously, which um, which was a really interesting little anecdote, that uh, it was a very hot summer and yeah. you ended up opening the windows in your studio. And in these two pieces, I'm just going to go back to the previous piece for a moment. Uh, for the first time I, I, ever, I've seen work um, in your installation that's hanging, it's on string, and they're actually hanging from clothes pegs. Um, so when you open the window, of course, uh, you began to get an airflow coming in from outside, yeah. and this created movement, uh, which is the first time you've, you, you've let that element into, your, um, into the structure of your installations. And so as a result, we, we start to see soft, soft focus, areas of soft focus, uh, which come about from from that that movement, uh, and again, to me, that um, shows the confidence in in developing a more painterly approach where there's there's slightly less control. Yeah, yeah. And for me, painting and photography came, yeah, came together in a way, using this um, this sharpness and sharpness, this movement and this, uh, yeah, it came together like that. Yeah, and I came up with. The idea of um, because the wind through the the wind came through the window and it starts to uh, to move a bit, but then with these images uh, I put uh, an um, like hair dryer like uh, and really like uh, <laughs> when I was standing next to the camera I would like <laughs> give extra wind to uh, mm -hmm. certain parts in the yeah. And Femke, because um, we can all see you in your studio now, uh, and we're beginning to get a bit of a, uh, an entry into to what you're working on now, can you tell us a little bit more about um, what, what you're working on now and um, what you hope for your, for your next project? Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm painting on canvas now. That's quite a new step. Usually I would just pa paint straight on the wall or uh, paint on cardboard and uh, I would like throw that away afterwards. But now I'm using canvas only. So the, yeah, the whole studio is sort of covered in different pieces of canvas. So maybe at some point I can move them about or maybe even make a canvas of it. Maybe a painting can come out of this. I'm not sure yet. It's, uh, it's too early to tell. Uh, and I'm also making paint myself now using Actimpera. And before that, I would just like open a little paint and start painting quite uh, intuitive in, in an impulse. Uh, but now making the Actimpera, I really have to think like, okay, I'm making this paint now. It's quite precious. It's only a little bit. Where shall I? paint so I want to um, get a bit more con contemplation about painting and what am I doing and why the color here and you know to yeah to work a bit more uh, and why did you why did you choose such a, a an ancient paint type why did you choose the egg tempera as, as the the paint that you wanted to use yeah it's just actually because uh, I, I was so um I want to concentrate on painting more, so I just start reading about painting a lot. And of course, then you, I thought, let's start at the beginning. And, um, and then for me, that made sense to also make paint myself and just really start from the basic. Yeah. Again, I see that you uh, really like to um, be handling all of your materials and your, your process from start to finish. And in fact, that's something we haven't touched on until now is mm -hmm. I, I really noticed um, we see in all your work that the the material element of uh, what your your studio set and the um, the the props and uh, the, the the all the tools that you use to uh, make your work is integral to the final piece and you like to uh, show that in your final piece. Yeah, yeah I see them as a sort of witnesses of the uh, process, and I'm. Um, I always have this, um, I'm striving that the actual work can arise from the workplace. So the workplace is still in the work. And um, sometimes you would see that really obvious, but sometimes there are like little uh, hints of what the actual size is maybe, or you, you think you look at a painting or you have the feeling of, of a painting and then suddenly you are more sucked into this room of this space or the, like more the reality. And, 
I like it when my work sort of moves in between both, uh, both of them. Yeah. And I think for the audience, they get that too. Um, as they look further into each work of art that you make, they begin to see the clues of your studio set and can almost uh, experience your experience of being immersed, immersed inside, inside the artwork. So I'm, I certainly say that I'm really excited to see what comes next. I love the look of the, the set in front of you. Um, so really looking forward to that. Um, and at this point, uh, I'm going to open up uh, opportunity for the audience to ask questions, um, mm -hmm. which I, I understand they can type in. Um, yeah. Thanks, Francis. Yeah, we've, we've got we've got a raft of questions here. So I'll, I'll start. I'll start now. Um, a great one from Carol Robertson. How important is lighting in your photography, MK? Yeah, it starts to become really uh, important. Um, first of all, I would just use a light that was there, but now I'm integrating um, lights much more. And sometimes then you will get shadows. And I'm even thinking of using the shadows much more dominant in my work as well, uh, which you already see a bit in this work, uh, the Turning Photo One. Um, yeah, so I think it's gonna be a much more important part of my work in the future. Great. And then Carol also asks, uh, you make beautiful small black and white photos and large color photos, which you can probably just see behind in my um, virtual mm -hmm. background here, the different scale of work. So the larger ones are all in colour and then the smaller ones are these beautiful mm -hmm. black and white um, photos. So Carol's asking, do you, um, do you make large black and white, white photos? Yeah, there are two black and white photos in the show as well. Um, but uh, usually I just have the colours big, wor big works. Uh, in, uh, and um, of course, those those works on uh, on paper, they are just like this is the work. So I can't really enlarge that or something. But sometimes I have, I have black and white negative as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lizzie's asked, when did you get the idea to paint on perspex as part of your stage? You mean the transparent? Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, that also happened in this during this residency uh, in Bielefeld uh, because normally I would just put layer and layer of paints uh, uh, on the walls. Uh, but then at some point I thought when I use sheets, I can really like layer in the room. And um, so, and the, but yeah, so it came from that idea to I could show the layering in the room and actually use the whole space as well rather than just the walls. It really does create that sense of space, doesn't it, with the movement of, of the, um, the perspex sheets and the um, going in and out of focus with that painterly effect that you have. Yeah. Very successful. It opens up space a bit more than um, just uh, putting thick paints all over, over and over again on the wall. So it, it, it opens up a bit more and gives a bit more space, I think. Yeah. Great. Okay, great question from Kat Morton here. We can see and understand so many art historical references in your work. Kurt Fitters, Mertzbau, of course, comes to mind. I also find myself thinking of the rhythmical work of Bryce Marden's Cold Mountain series and his etchings to Rex Roth. Then come thoughts about the long history of artists as set designers. You also hold a position within the context of performance artists. My question is, which individuals in art would you cast as your adoptive art family? <laughs> um, I would say um, there are a few women that I um, uh, quite admire, like Eva Hesse, of course, with her minimal installations, and Jessica Stockholder with her like colorful uh, installations as well. But I'm also really into painters like Paul Cezanne, Giotto, or Paul Clay, for example. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, and then the question here from Megan Ringrose. The crossover in mediums with painting and photography to create your work in, su in super interesting, is super interesting, especially when you look at history of photography. So I think that was just a compliment rather than a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, my question was um, what I find really interesting in the exhibition, Femke, um, you have a video which shows your process. And I wondered whether 
video was going to become part of, of your art process as, as a next step from, from photography. Um, there is very much, just like Kat, uh, the good point that Kat made, there is a, there is a sense of um, performance in your work in the way that you're having an intervention in your space and, and going backwards and forwards in front of and behind the lens and in capturing the video. Is that something you're going to be exploring further? Yeah, I'm doing it here now at the moment as well. Um, like in Bielefeld, I made uh, a, a time lapse uh, video, which is seen in the in the gallery uh, or is on display in the gallery. And then I would the the camera would just make photos every now and then again. But now I'm also filming in my set, and I'm I'm trying out different ways of a bit more um, a bit more movement, like moving. Um, uh, moving footage rather than just the one fixed photo so i'm working on it but i haven't quite figured out yet how to uh, how to integrate it to my like practice really but maybe in the future it will find see what happens um yeah. and there's a question for you how did you come to meet um femke and discover her work and do you have any advice for photography collectors out there on what to look out for and uh, how to start a photography collection i first uh, discovered femke's work at um unseen photo festival in amsterdam um and was really struck by uh how unique uh, this very unique practice um of course well Certainly to me, and I think anyone who's um, looking at uh, building a collection, I, I'm always looking for someone who, uh, a, a photographer who's stretching the boundaries of, of, uh, of the medium and, and uh, coming up with a, a new concept or a new idea that I haven't seen before. And I really felt that uh, Fenke achieved this. Um, at the time, I remember that there was a small reconstruction of uh, one of Femke's installations as part of the display. Um, and that was really exciting to me to, to see the sort of material element of uh, the journey in which Femke went on uh, in order to make her, her final piece. Um, but as, since, as I've got to know Femke in more detail, I realised that actually she doesn't necessarily want um, the audience to see um, a replica of the, the studio set. Um, so that was, that was exciting for me to see at the time, but now that I understand her work in more, in more detail, I wouldn't necessarily encourage her to do that again. Um, but in, in general, in terms of um, discovering new photographers um, and, and new artists of interest, an art fair is often a good place to go um, to learn uh, because of course there are many galleries and many artists exhibited under the same roof and whilst um, art fairs are often uh, a commercial setting it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that you have to go there to, 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 to buy. Um, it's a great opportunity to, to meet many galleries and discover, discover artworks and of course um, this last year hasn't been wonderful for for art fairs and, and for public exhibitions in general, but of course in the future when we can all travel and um, interact in, more in, in greater numbers again, these opportunities I'm sure will arise again. Um, thank you, thank you Anstis. We have another question uh, from Matthew Stevenson. Hi Femke, hi Anstis. Whilst the, whilst the photo is the work, how much does the, does the scale of the installation matter to you? Have you taken your practice outside of the studio into public space? Uh, no, it's always uh, in this comfort zone of the studio, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, the, the size does matter because, um, because I really like to be like, my whole body is involved in making it. So um, um, I can express myself with like a brush up like this and not like work on a little canvas, for example. So the, the size does really matter the size of the space. But uh, yeah, I always worked inside, yeah. Then can we you might need to take it outside for, uh, for maybe one, yeah. Would you say that it's quite private work as well? Um, the, the experience of being immersed in that studio setting is quite private and, and that's why you've remained within the studio. Yeah, when, when I'm making it, I'm not thinking of other people or the people's gonna watch it. it it's quite a private process of me with the camera and, and just uh, snuggled up in this room here. And then, um, you know, I'm, I'm, 
never thinking of words or telling a story with it. It's it's just having this this sense, this um, the the tactility of the space and material, uh, and yeah, that's what I'm concerned with, and not really like how people are gonna actually look at it, maybe or yeah. Um, so your work is very well suited to these extraordinary times of the pandemic and lockdown and creating <laughs> such inspiring yeah. spaces in your interior in, and in your studio. Yeah, like the lockdown, of course, is, is very hard and it's it's really, really big disaster. But for me, like I'm still going to my studio and uh, I like to uh, lock myself up in <laughs> so, yeah. We have another question here from James Kent. Um, Femke, you discussed always destroying the canvases or installations after photographing them. Can mm. you say a bit more about how important this is to your practice and how it impacts on your ways of working? Have you ever regretted destroying a canvas or installation? No, like destroying uh, sounds really like uh, final, but it's more like removing pieces again and then maybe turn it around and use the other side of the wood again. Like it's a constantly, I'm constantly moving with stuff and material in my room of in my studio um and i actually never regret it no because it's just a constant flow of making and using material and um i reuse a lot of stuff as well um so no i, I just see it as material and um so no no <laughs> the destroying is just part of the work of the work process Okay, well, thank you so much, Femke. I think that's the last of the questions and, and we're coming to the end of, of our time. So I'd just like to round up to say thank you so much, Femke, and congratulations for this wonderful exhibition that's been so well received. And thank you, Anstis, and congratulations to you too. Um, the exhibition is available to view online. Um, at uh, zulekagallery.com and um, I'd also like to say thank you to Photo Oxford Festival just to say that there is another excellent um, talk build on Tuesday with um, Dr Lena Fritsch and Professor Jeffrey Batchin uh, titled Anna Atkins um, a, a Botanical Illustration and Photographic Innovation and that's on Tuesday November 10th at 5 p.m. So do sign up to join that talk again. Um, so I shall just round up by saying thank you so much and thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. I hope you've enjoyed the talk. Thank you.